By the year 600 BCE, the pyramids of Giza had already stood for over 2,000 years, silently witnessing the rise of human civilization, growing in rapid and diverse ways. It was during this time that our fascination with the stars began to turn into a study. The Babylonians recorded the movements of celestial bodies like the sun, moon, and planets, and developed a calendar that could predict lunar and solar eclipses. Meanwhile, the Greeks began to question the myths surrounding the world. They began to propose that the Earth was spherical, based on observations like the shape of the Earth's shadow on the moon during eclipses. Astronomy was just beginning to take shape. And it was during this time that a star, 2600 light years away, erupted in a dramatic explosion. Now, 2600 years later, we are going to witness that explosion in the night sky. Fascinating, isn't it? Welcome to territory. This is your space. Imagine looking up at the night sky and noticing a bright new star where none had been before. This was the experience of Burchard, the abbot of Erzberg in Germany over 800 years ago when he observed a faint star that for a time shone with great light. The star he saw was T, Coronae Borealis, a variable star in the constellation Corona Borealis, also known as the Northern Crown. A variable star is a star that appears to change brightness from Earth's perspective over time. TCRB is 2,600 light years from Earth, meaning that the events we observe today actually occurred 2,600 years ago. Now, during the prime of their lives, most stars are powered by nuclear fusion reactions deep inside their cores. However, Coronae Borealis is well past its prime and is now a stellar remnant known as a white dwarf. But Coronae Borealis is not alone. It's a rare and fascinating binary star system where it's locked with its stellar companion in a cosmic dance. The primary star is a white dwarf, a remnant of a once massive star that has exhausted its nuclear fuel and collapsed into a dense, Earth-sized object. This white dwarf, although seemingly quiet, harbors an immense gravitational pull, drawing in material from its companion star, a red giant, bloated and cool, shedding its outer layers as it nears the end of its life. This mass transfer is the critical piece of the puzzle in understanding why Coronae Borealis is known as a recurrent nova. A recurrent nova? Does that mean it explodes over and over again? Yes, every 80 years, T. Coronae Borealis puts on a show for us here on Earth. As the white dwarf draws off material from the red giant, it gradually accumulates on its surface. Over decades, this process leads to the buildup of a critical mass of hydrogen on the white dwarf's surface. Once enough hydrogen has been gathered, a powerful thermonuclear reaction ignites, a runaway fusion event that causes the star to explode in a spectacular nova. When this happens, the energy released makes TCRB shine 1,500 times brighter than usual, making it visible to the naked eye in the night sky. The last such explosion occurred in 1946, and as we pass the 80-year mark, the world eagerly anticipates the coming eruption. When TCRB goes nova, the explosion releases an enormous amount of energy, blasting the accumulated material into space at high speeds. This creates a shell of gas that expands outward, and the system temporarily becomes one of the brightest objects in the sky. After the explosion subsides, the process starts all over again, as the white dwarf continues to pull in material, repeating the cycle. But how are we so sure that we are going to witness it soon? TCRB's previous two eruptions in 1866 and 1946 exhibited similar patterns. Approximately a decade before each explosion, the star's brightness increased slightly, reaching what is known as a high state, followed by a brief dimming or dip about a year before the eruption. The star entered its high state in 2015, and the pre-eruption dip was detected in March 2023, which has put astronomers on alert. The reasons behind these patterns remain some of the intriguing mysteries surrounding TCRB. Once it explodes, we won't have much time. Yes, once Coronae Borealis erupts, the peak brightness will be fleeting, lasting only a few hours. Within a week, the star will dim significantly, requiring binoculars to observe it. It's highly likely that an amateur astronomer will be the first to spot the eruption of the star, and notify the professional astronomy community. These dedicated amateurs often monitor stars from their own observatories, filling crucial gaps in the observation of the night sky. 
During its peak brightness, the nova will be visible to the naked eye, though binoculars or a small telescope will offer a more detailed view. Despite not reaching the intensity of the brightest stars or planets, the nova will be a remarkable and memorable sight for sky watchers and amateur astronomers alike. And more than anything, it is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime cosmic event. So, look up. The Alpha Centauri star system consists of three stars, Alpha Centauri A and B, locked in a binary dance, and Proxima Centauri, a faint red dwarf. This entire system is moving toward us at a speed of 22 kilometers per second, or about 79,000 kilometers per hour, making it an ideal subject for studying how material travels between solar systems. In roughly 28,000 years, Alpha Centauri will reach its closest approach to us, about 200,000 astronomical units from the Sun. Scientists believe that material ejected from this system can and will reach us, and in fact, some of it may already be here. Existing models of material ejection from star systems are based partly on how our own solar system expels matter, and the researchers built their work on these models. Their findings suggest that Alpha Centauri may have ejected a significant amount of material, estimating that around 1 million particles larger than 100 meters in diameter are already within our Oort cloud. This animation that tries to bring the research to life shows our sun marked in a black hexagon, and its orbit is shown as a gray solid line. Alpha Centauri is represented by the yellow star, with its orbital path shown as a blue solid line. The study visualizes how Alpha Centauri moves through the galaxy and tracks the movement of material it ejects, some of which may already be in our solar system. However, the simulation shows that while particles from Alpha Centauri could plausibly reach our solar system, their size matters. According to the scientists, small particles those that would appear as meteors in Earth's atmosphere are unlikely to make it. They face numerous obstacles along their journey, including magnetic fields, drag from the interstellar medium, and potential destruction through sputtering or collisions. But the research also found that some material from Alpha Centauri have already reached our solar system, with most of it traveling for less than 10 million years. It's fascinating to imagine that when their journey began, dinosaurs roamed the Earth, and the age of mammals had yet to begin. But to survive the journey, these particles must be larger than about 10 microns. Researchers estimate that around 10 Alpha Centauri particles currently enter Earth's atmosphere as detectable meteors, a number expected to increase tenfold over the next 28,000 years. This research reinforces the idea that our solar system is not isolated. If material can travel between star systems, it offers valuable insight into how planets form. Getting a clear understanding of how material travels from Alpha Centauri to our solar system not only enhances our knowledge of interstellar transport, but also sheds light on the interconnected nature of stellar systems and the potential for material exchange throughout the galaxy.